Mr. Richard Cox, a farmer who loves his chickens. In the past, he successfully raised 300 chickens, but in the end, it wasn't enough. With more knowledge, Mr. Cox was able to increase that number to 1,000 chickens, which exceeded previous expectations. Now, Mr. Cox has other ideas. Hello everyone, welcome to another RimWorld video. In this video, we are jumping back into the saga of Mr. Cox. And as mentioned in the intro, last video we were able to get to 1,000 chickens. And I mentioned at the end of that video to share some of your suggestions on what we should do with them. And unsurprisingly, you guys had some amazing suggestions and ideas. I'm gonna go over these suggestions you guys had, and at the end of this video, I will take these 1,000 chickens and do three different endings with this video. So so ignore some of the stuff we got going down here as well as right here to start off one of the comments i had was to pack all the chickens in one room which I did right here, you can see. The chickens used to wander around all over this entire map, but that kind of made the game go really slow because they were moving like crazy. You could see here, instead of them roaming everywhere, they are now just densely compacted right here. And you can see the FPS is not so bad when they're all stuck in there. Now that changes once we fast forward a bit, you can see here it drops quite a bit but not nearly as bad as it was. So that was suggestion number one. A few other comments suggested converting some of these sleeping spots into medical beds, which I did here. In the last video, a lot of the chickens got sick and were dying, get struck by lightning, they catch on fire. Oh no, oh no, oh no. No! Oh, that one's burning to death. It just happens. So now that they're densely compact in here, whenever they get sick, they just go sleep on the medical beds. No issues. That was a great suggestion because I definitely ignored the medical beds in the last video. Another comment from someone who loves you 997 suggested planting dandelions instead of rice because they grow faster, which is certainly true. I've played a few playthroughs on my own where my caravan animals survive off of dandelions and that is far more helpful than rice or something like that. And you can see here, I planted a bunch of dandelions in this little pin. So they feast off that, which is quite helpful. Another great comment came from Jacob6885, who suggested making a smaller pen, farming food, and then transferring the food into the pens via lifters. Something that we kind of started last video, but we reached a thousand chickens. And by that time, it was kind of difficult to implement because the chickens were all over the place. So the smaller pen definitely did that. Farming food. So now that the chickens are surviving on dandelions in here, I did plant rice all over the map, which is what we were doing, but the chickens were eating the rice a little too quickly, and they were never really able to grow. So now, our mechanoids are out here planting and growing the rice, and just as Jacob suggested, hauling the rice into these barrels for the chickens to eat. Which brings me to my last batch of suggestions. The grazing mod, which makes animals eat just the amount they need instead of the whole plant and it leaves a bit of plant to regrow without needing to replant which saves the energy of the mechanoids that plant the plants and then also you know just saves time and resources very very helpful mod that i've been using since the mods are called graze up and grazing lands i will also list all the mods i use down below in the description now regarding the low res and the fps even while prepping mr cox and his chickens for this video moving all the chickens in here which took forever the chickens kept breeding while doing that and actually got up to 3,000 chickens oh my goodness we are at 3,000 chickens what is going on oh my lord i'm going at 2 fps we're now back at 1,000 chickens because I set the manual slaughter to keep them at 1,000 chickens so the game doesn't just combust into flames. But we did get up to 3,000 chickens, which was insane and caused my game to crash multiple times. So quite funny. Another comment from RNTS08 had a very helpful suggestion regarding a performance enhancing mod. I found these help a decent amount, but probably can't combat having over a thousand animals in the colony, but it does help gauge the FPS and just keep track of the overall performance. The mods I found are the Performance Optimizer, Dub's Performance Analyzer, and Rocket Man Performance. And I believe compacting your animals in a small space is actually what 
saved my CPU from catching on fire. Weathercaster had a fantastic idea. Downloading a genetics mod to make uber chickens, which I immediately went to try, but unfortunately the mod is not up to date with the current RimWorld version. Also, making the chickens faster would probably make things much worse for everyone involved. So that's something I'll keep an eye out for the future, and hopefully that mod updates soon. Now, to get into the three different endings I want to create with these 1,000 chickens. The first you can see is I made a lot of launch pads, and the goal is to load all 1,000 chickens into these launch pods, and then launch them at our enemies. So without further ado, we're gonna do just that. So if we go into the transport pod, load launch pod, and we're gonna start selecting our chickens. Chickens. Let's go into Mr. Cox's schedule, and for now, let's have him work 24-7. Let's load these chickens in, and he should be doing that. Yep, loading the hen to the transport pod. Ooh, the haulers help with that. Oh, that is so helpful. Okay, good, because it looks like they have to go in one by one, which is gonna be extremely tedious. Now, to save you guys from the monotony of unloading every single chicken and the FPS dropping as I fast forward, I will see you back here once the chickens are all loaded. Okay, so all the pods are loaded up with chickens. Now, there's a few things we need to talk about. <laughs> One is that when you go to load the chickens into the pods, if they just had the name hen or chicken or a basic name like that, like these guys have over here, hen, 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 chick, they don't load well into the pods to the point where it makes our colonists and our mechanoids glitch where they just get stuck standing. Now, because I work in tech in real life, I was able to test it until I figured out the solution. And the solution is naming each chicken chicken individually. So if they have their own individual name, they can then be loaded into the pods. So we are making a huge dent in the thousand chickens. I believe these pods have about 200 chickens because if we go to the animals, we have 800 in the pen. So we'll go ahead and launch these guys and the next launch will have a lot more of the chickens. Now, some of you in the comments might be saying, hey, is it really worth individually naming each of the chickens so you can then launch them into nothingness? And I might say, yeah, it's kind of pointless, but also I set my mind to doing this and we're going to be doing it even if it takes me hours. Okay, so let's select all the launch pads. If we launch it at someone who's considered an enemy, the contents will just be lost. So we're going to launch them to the Natul Treaty. It will be considered a gift. Oh, seems like one went over there, but it made the Natul Treaty change from a negative five to a three. They were very happy. Boom. I guess this is kind of like a glitch to, to get people to like you. All right, let's keep launching them at them. And off they go. Wow. They are now at positive 70. Well, it's time to rebuild the transport pods. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, the transport pods are now rebuilt and refueled. So it's time to start loading the chickens again. And unfortunately, they keep breeding. With the first batch of chickens named, we're going to go ahead and load them in. And because they are named, there is no issues. Pretty easy. All right, well, ready for round two. Every pod is filled to the brim with as many chickens as it can hold. So with that, we are going to launch the chickens. So if we select the launching spot and off they go. Oh my goodness. Holy. Okay, we, we lost a few of them, but that did grow the relationship to positive 100. Well, unfortunately, that's as much as I could do for the launching pads because it takes way too long and they just keep breeding like in a crazy amount. There's no way I could keep up. And I tried sterilizing all of them, but that is just impossible as well because they just keep coming. And with that, that actually takes us to our second phase. RNTS08 and Jacob6885 both suggested using the chickens and some sort of battle or attack. 
with Jacob mentioning using the animal pulsar to make them go berserk, which I thought was an amazing idea. So we do have a, a psychic animal pulsar right here. So let's go ahead and reload so we have a thousand chickens again. Okay, we are back. Now, what we need to do here is we have the caravan hitching spot right here. So we are going to caravan our 1,000 chickens and then take them to the world and then attack our enemies over here. They are at a negative 100. So we're going to take our chickens and wander all the way over there. Let's go ahead and start that very long journey. We're going to form caravan. Go here. It's going to take us 2.6 days. Now for the tenuous part, we need Mr. Cox. Every single chicken on this map, which is a lot of them. And then let's go ahead. We need to bring some food. Let's bring about 800 rice or so. Because we also need to make room for the animal pulsar. Okay. And I think that's all we need. Need. So, Mr. Cox will go ahead and start caravanning them up. Let's have him also to load the psychic animal pulsar into the caravan. So, he'll go ahead and hitch them right there. Now, I'm also going to move some of the food baskets around them. So, that way the chickens could eat while they are being caravanned. And that should be enough. And with that, I will see you once we are caravaned up. All right. It looks like we have everyone gathered. Okay. It seems like Mr. Cox is going to start the journey of gathering them all to then head towards the exit, which this alone is going to take a good while. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and pan back and then I will see you there. Alright, he's coming on his last few chickens, which is good because I know he's starting to lose his mind because he is very hungry and tired. And I know the chickens probably are getting tired too. And when I play tested this before, if the chickens get completely tired, they will then fall over. So Mr. Cox has to lead this group to the edge of the map before they start falling over from exhaustion. So I wish you luck, Mr. Cox. You got this. Okay, thank goodness. The edge of the map isn't that far. I thought he had to go all the way up here. Okay. Okay, he might actually make it. Come on, Mr. Cox. You're almost there. You're almost there. You're almost there. Fight them. Just get there before they start falling over. All right, cool. All right, now that they're on their way, they can at least sleep and eat on the road. So Mr. Cox, yeah, he was able to eat. And for brevity's sake, I am going to abandon the home. Yes. And we left behind a few chicks, apparently. They must have hatched and all of our mechanoids. That means we will be able to move much faster. Yeah, for some reason, the game, when you don't have a home, goes much quicker. I think it's because it doesn't have to register the what's going on at the base for raiders and things like that. And in our case, the mechanoids. Now, it's Mr. Cox and his chickens, so they're still going slow. But we'll get there soon. All right, we are arriving. Boom, attack begins. Let's go. Oh my god, that's so many chickens. So the good news is, is that they should stay put. And luckily, it looks like they don't have any mortars. So they're not going to rain down on us while we are just hanging out down here. Firstly, we need to go ahead and release all of our chickens. Oh no, some of them are going to make Mr. Cox sad because he's bonded to them. All right, I think we might have gotten all of them. So firstly, let's go ahead and drop all of the rice and stuff so that way the chickens will feed on it. And then let's set Mr. Cox to set his work schedule to nonstop because we need him to release all of these chickens. And so it begins. Okay, so all the chickens are released, and if you can see here, we are all right here ready to go. Now, there's just one more thing I have to do. So, Mr. Cox has granite blocks. Now, we have to build a granite box, basically, because these chickens are going to attack everything, including Mr. Cox. So, we need Mr. Cox to be protected, if possible. Let's have him build himself in here. The chickens are still asleep, so Mr. Cox has time. And luckily, the enemies don't really know we're here. They're not attacking. Oh, chicken, you do not know what's about to come. You poor thing. Okay, this is built, and I hope this is enough to protect him, but we shall see. 
All right, we're going to have Mr. Cox barricade himself in here. Go to his gear, drop the animal pulser, and then let's have Mr. Cox activate the pulser, and we will watch the chickens go mad. Oh my god. It's not just the chickens. It's all of them. All the animals are maddened. Well, Mr. Cox seems to be safe in his home. All the animals are just surrounding Mr. Cox. Oh my goodness. Okay, I have a plan. Okay, so I spawned in another colonist just in the middle of the mountain right here. So they shouldn't be able to get to them. And since the animals seem to just be hovering around Mr. Cox and not attacking the enemies, I think Mr. Cox has to do something unrestricted go ahead mr cox the enemies are attacking my colony oh no they're coming wait mr cox stay inside stay inside you might be okay uh-oh they're coming protect me my chickens even though you are not on my side right now you are indirectly on my team get them one down there they go the chickens are attacking Oh my goodness. Well, luckily, Mr. Cox gets to stay inside while this happens. Base destroyed. Oh, they're fleeing. Oh my goodness. Get them, guys. Oh yeah. <laughs> chicken beak. Look at the chicken beak and chicken feet. The chickens are, are kind of ruthless. Uh-oh. Well... I think that only leaves Mr. Cox. So, let's step out into the open. Go ahead, Mr. Cox. Your fate is yours. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's running. Oh, no. Oh. I've never seen this before. Yeah, heal yourself, Mr. Cox. Um... Oh, you're gonna go out again. Yeah. Well. Um, that's, uh... Yeah. Your caravan has been lost. The following people, animals, and mechanoids have been lost with it. Mr. Cox. Okay, well, that was using the chickens to attack our enemies, and mainly using the Berserk Pulser. Which brings me to the last comment I want to check out, which is from Nonsensical Webby1663, where he suggested I do a Breaking Bad Los Polos playthrough, disguising my selling as a chicken farm, which is an idea I may come back to, since I love Breaking Bad. But for now, I created a makeshift restaurant. And for the third ending, we're gonna slaughter all the chickens and make food out of them. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to animals, manage slaughter, max zero. And now Mr. Cox will begin slaughtering the chickens. Goodbye chickens. God, you would think he's a, a well-oiled killing machine by how fast he's killing the chickens. And you can see here the lifter is already carrying the chicken's body to the meat hook. And the bodies are starting to pile outside. Wow. Like these chickens are trying to get away. They're like, run, run. They made slaughtering animals way too fast in this game. He's just going crazy with it. There's literally blood everywhere. Yeah, he took a, a quick meal break, and then back to the killing. Is he done already? That was so fast. There's this one chicken, Ursula. I don't know how that one escaped. Oh, there's a few. And here he comes to get them. Oh boy. The last two. And they were chicks. They must have just hatched. Well, Mr. Cox, it is time to become a cook. So let's begin that next journey in your life. He's cooking lavish carnivore meals. 
as he butchers the chickens. While Mr. Cox is doing that, I forgot to mention this statue. It's a golden grand sculpture. The title is O.E. of a Hen. And if we look at the view information, it says, This piece is shaped like Richard Mr. Cox Cox, brutally knocking unconscious a hen with passionate rage. Mr. Cox looks triumphant. The work is shaped in hues of black and orange. In addition to that, the subjects are in front of a cauliflower. This depiction relates to the disabling of the hen by Mr. Cox on the 1st of April May, 5501. Wow. And literally, that was the first thing that came up. So I just put it inside of this restaurant. It's very fitting. So while Mr. Cox butchers his chickens and makes carnivore meals, that is what we have to sit here and think about as the dandelions grow in the chicken pen. All right, while well, Mr. Cox takes a nap, I will jump back here once we have some of the meals completed and a lot of the chickens butchered. Well, most of the chickens are rotting and once they are rotted, you cannot butcher them. But with that, we were able to fill these barrels multiple times over with chicken meat, which is for some weird reason very red. And we filled this very large storage shelf with lavish chicken meals, which you can see Mr. Cox enjoying right here. Well, with that, I think we've completed the restaurant arc of Mr. Cox as he continuously makes carnivore meals out of chickens. All right, well, that concludes what I wanted to accomplish with this video. I mainly wanted to highlight some of the great ideas and suggestions you guys had, as well as give you guys some more content. It's been amazing watching this channel I started just to create creative videos and tell stories, how much fun it's been, and how well received the videos have been so far. I cannot stress how much that means to me and how much I appreciate it. And to end it, I want to flash some of the nice comments I've gotten of late on the screen because I never in a million years would have assumed that I would have this kind of reaction to something I've made. And while that is going on, because the chickens didn't do a good job at killing Mr. Cox when we raided that base, I am gonna have Mr. Cox pick up the pulser and we're gonna go in the middle of his chicken farm and have some fun. All right, Mr. Cox, get in the middle of all the chickens. Drop the pulser, and Mr. Cox, go ahead and activate it. I forgot that they have to be wild chickens. Okay, give me one second. <laughs> all right, well, with a large portion of the chickens outside, we will try this once again. Go ahead and activate the animal pulser. Oh man, they got in a straight line, huh? Wow. Oh my god, they're all coming inside. Oh no. Wow. Yeah, they're all attacking the mechanoids. Oh my goodness, that's crazy. Go, Mr. Turtle. It's your time to shine. It's Mr. Cox is, is winding down here. And with that, Mr. Cox is down to his last hour as he suffers from extreme blood loss from his chicken bites and scratches and bruises. Goodbye, Mr. Cox. 